Hello comic fans, here's Al Grey. Recently I've shown you this beautiful, huge baby, crazy cat, published by uh, Taschen. Um, fantastic book. In the comment section, uh, Peter Cooper uh, wrote to me, um, hey, have you checked out uh, the Spider-Man book? They did a similar tome with the very first 20 issues uh, of Marvel with Spider-Man in it. So. Marvel is not really in my wheelhouse. Spider-Man is a um, nice character. I, I re really do like this character, though. And Steve Ditko, of course, is in my wheelhouse. I circled uh, two weeks around the subject of getting the book here. So, but you know how these stories eventually end. Um, the mind is willing, but the flesh is weak. So, yeah, I bought it. So that you just can uh, get a feel for the size of the uh, amazing Spider-Man book here. Uh, it comes in this package, so um, this uh, cardboard box, which is very cool, and I will totally keep it stored in this uh, box here. Um, and it, it arrived uh, safely. 100% uh, no ding in it whatsoever. They packed it fantastically. I ordered it uh, directly via Taschen. So you can put it here in, into this box. Fantastic stuff. I love it. So, but of course, that's here the important one. So you see the actual book is a bit smaller in size. Uh, but has some pages more, or is or is thicker than uh, the Crazy Cat one. So, but have spoken enough about Crazy Cat. Yeah, as you can see, this is the comic book size uh, format. So you already see they blown uh, these pages up many many times. And what they did was um, scanning the original material from um, collectors, what not. Uh, mint uh, copies, I think, and uh, photographed it and um, cleaned the scans. Uh, there's a little bit of other stuff here. Oh, wait. Don't this box here underneath. I'm a bit precious with this book here um, because the price tag on this one here is 150 euros or $200, I guess, and um, it's a bit different, I think, like with the Crazy Cat one, I don't think that there will be a bargain sale uh, anytime in the future. Um, it's rather, uh, probably uh, they will sell out pretty soon, I, I assume. But uh, Taschen maybe will reprint the stuff here, but no way that they um, sell it for 30 bucks like I got the uh, crazy cat book. Still think that this was some kind of mistake. So I hope you can see it. Okay, they're numbered if you're in for that gimmick. Uh, 5,000 copies printed and bound in Italy. And my number is 2000, the 2781st. So then we have these blue and white pages, um, nice stuff, and of course some um, forward here by one of Ralph Macchio, and <laughs> fantastic page, and already reminds me what I always liked about the Ditko art that I've seen for the most part in these fantastic Joe books who did everything right in um, reprinting the stuff from the originals without recoloring at all. And yeah, it's just great, goofy, uh, in a way minimal art, uh, he, but he's a great storyteller. I wish you could feel this paper here. It's totally slick. It's cover. Uh, these covers, uh, they were printed in... Um, yeah, on art print paper, very thick. Uh, so, yeah, it's perfect for covers. And the ins interiors, and they uh, 
reprinted here the ads in this huge size very funny of course and uh, this inside paper here I have never feel felt I, I think I really haven't uh, seen this paper here anywhere before it's uh, like newsprint but feels very solid and um, reproduces uh, the colors astonishingly good uh, some colors really pop here and um, you will see this here look for an instance this yellow here and you can always see here all the bende dots they haven't changed anything uh, in in terms of uh, um, the originals but have cleared them up and made them like they were printed yesterday with modern technology uh, I really like these simple but very effectful drawings. The um, we have here the original Spider-Man, of course. It's uh, the Amazing Spider-Man number one um, after uh, he appeared for the very first time in Amazing Fantasy 15. Uh, but you know all this, of course. Uh, I'm just the <laughs> noob. Uh, who had read uh, some Spider-Man story here and there. I'm, I'm totally not crazy for reading the zillions version of the story here, but this was when they first uh, did these stories here and uh, actually there was a lot of skepticism towards uh, the story and the character. Will it fly? Will this work? Because uh, how can teenagers relate to a spider but it was perfect and Steve Ditko was obviously the perfect choice for this character. So we have here some cameos of the Fantastic Four of course. Um, Spider-Man was an instant success. Um, it appeared as I said it in Amazing Fantasy number 15 which was the last uh, book of that series but became uh, very soon his own series. Uh, in the beginning they thought okay they do this bi-monthly or every two uh, months but um, very soon it uh, turned to be uh, became a monthly title. And he, one of the very goofy um, characters. The villains are really very fun. This is the chameleon. And look here, this is the way how simple Ditko worked. Uh, it's just amazing. Some panels, you can't, couldn't reduce them even more. It's such a minimal but very uh, effectful style uh, that it makes me really um, smile and giggle all the time. And uh, maybe it's even not the real the style that you need these uh, these big pages here even though it's glorious and here we have the back uh, page again with the huge ad there and this is spider-man the amazing spider-man uh, issue two gorgeous uh, reproduction qualities here all over and wonder how long I can go on here. Um, this is the Walcher, one of the other goofy uh, opponents of our guy Spidey. And here the uh, spider symbol on his chest is as simple as a, a spider could be drawn. Look at the face here. I mean, I don't have to explain you how great uh, Steve Ditko was. Well, that's uh, that's just a fact. Um, but this book here, man, it's really a beauty. And uh, such a fun to read this stuff here this format and this huge size here. I guess I ramble a lot of the same stuff all over and over again but I really I, I look for the the dots here the bende dots and how each color is uh, created by um, 
the, these overlaying pixels and um, and fun, just fun for me to see when a color is really saturated and uh, you get even uh, some printing errors uh, still survived here. I mean, his red nose over there or, s or something else. Um, but it it's just yeah, an historical document <laughs> for for me. The greatest symbols in comics, yeah. <laughs> the Amazing Spider-Man, uh, issue three with uh, Dr. Octopus, Doc Ock. I mean, this stuff here is <laughs> totally silly. And I, I guess, of course, you know this guy here. But, yeah, since I'm not uh, a very avid uh, Marvel reader, uh, I really sort of um, rekindled my love for this kind of stupid superhero uh, genre that uh, sometimes is really just great fun. And this stuff here has a bit of uh, even... Would say underground appeal in this simplicity. Um, all this stuff is drawn in, and um, there's not, nothing really precious, or uh, there's uh, maybe these are not uh, the best pages to show you, but uh, there's really, really a contrast to, to the bombast of Kirby, which I like on a, on a different. Uh, level or angle, out of a different angle. And a pin-up. Yeah, the, uh, the, the, these comics here are just reproduced as they were published. And it's fantastic how Ditko can obviously change uh, his inner camera uh, to any perspective and and he he wants uh, which seems uh, necessary right there just look at these panels there um, and it's always it, it seems that he always uh, aims for the most essential um, lines and uh, when the story comes across when when uh, it's told what he wants to say or Stan Lee maybe um, then it's okay. Then he doesn't have to embellish uh, the stuff and fill with thousand details, even though this is here almost cramped with details when I look at this stuff here. Um, yeah, as you see here, the ribbon. Or um, I'm just so far in this book here. I'm spoiling myself here with these stories a bit. But what... There's nothing that I won't do for you, my dear watchers. However, um, <laughs> here we have even a bit of Hulk in it. And yeah, very st good stuff. In the end, we have uh, storylines and credits. So credits and summaries. Yeah, um, this was my overview of this fantastic book here, and uh, case this is maybe better view here. Let's take a last look at the binding, because this is of course uh, an issue or highly important with this book here. And as you see here, yeah, slight separation right there. Um, it's just on the bottom of this book here, not on the... 
Uh, uh, here's slight separation as well. Yeah. Um, last thing that the last thing that I have to mention, and this is really nerdy, um, but maybe I can do this here. Oh. It's good for your muscles to have this book here. Pump, pump. However, <laughs> uh, the texture of this book here. There's some kind of, um, not really cloth, but some fiber that uh, they put over the, the cardboard. So it has a real nice touch to it. It's, and this is the spine, I guess. I uh, haven't shown you this here yeah but the spine wouldn't be seen in my uh, shelf i'm afraid because i will put this in this box here so this is really a fantastic book i don't regret it at all to to have pulled the trigger um don't know if i uh, go full on tushin and uh will buy I, what they planned for the near future, uh, the Avengers and Captain America and what the Fantastic Four, of course. So uh, they will put out these in the near future, in the next years. Uh, so this seems to be a longer cooperation and I really hope uh, what I will uh, buy for sure would be uh, if they do a volume two of the Spider-Man edition here because Spidey comes pretty close to uh, the Silver Surfer for me in terms of my favorite Marvel characters. So, thanks for listening and watching. Goodbye.